This is part 37 of JavaScript tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss assigning event handlers to events using DOM object property. First, let's understand what is DOM. DOM stands for Document Object Model. When a browser loads a web page, the browser creates a document object model of that web page. Here we've got simple HTML. So within HTML, we have got head and body and under head we've got title and within body we've got script and div elements and under div we have h1 element. Here you can see a graphical representation of the document object model that would be constructed by the browser for this sample HTML. Notice that the root object is the vendor object and underneath that we've got document object and under that we have HTML and under that we have head and body. Under head we have got title and under body we have got script and div and under div we have h1. So notice that this document object model is created as a tree of objects. Now we can use JavaScript to access and modify DOM objects and their properties. For example, we can use JavaScript to add, modify and remove HTML elements within the DOM and even change their attributes. Along the same lines, we can also use DOM object properties to assign event handlers to events. Let's look at an example. So this is the same example that we worked with in the previous video session. In this example, notice that we are using the attributes of this HTML element to associate event handlers to events. For example, when mouse over event occurs, we want this function to be executed. So we are assigning this function to this attribute of this HTML element. Now instead of using attributes, we can also use DOM object properties. So we can rewrite this example like this. So I'm going to use the document object. So document dot get element by ID and then we pass the ID of the button which is btn. And then we are going to use this object property. So we have on mouse over property. So to this property, I'm going to assign the event handler function that we want to execute when mouse over event occurs. So when mouse over event occurs, we want to call this function. Along the same lines, when mouse out event occurs, we want to call this function. So since we are using the document object properties here, we can get rid of these HTML attributes. And we can change the implementation of these event handler methods. So we can delete that and then we can use this keyword here. So this keyword references the current element. In this case, notice that this function is assigned to this property. So this, in this case, references the button element. So here we also, we can use the this keyword. And let's do the same thing within this function as well. So now let's run this and the behavior should be exactly same when we hover the mouse over the button so on mouse over notice that the background color is red and focal i mean font color is yellow on mouse out background color is black and the font color is white so in this case we are actually having the code that we want to execute inside a named function that is a function that has got a name and then we are associating this function name with this property so when mouse over event occurs this function executes now instead of that we can have this code inside an anonymous function and then associate that anonymous function directly with this property what is an anonymous function anonymous function is a function that does not have any name so when i remove the names here so these functions are now anonymous functions so what i can do is take this function definition and then get rid of the name from there and then paste it right there. So to this property now we are associating this anonymous function. So when mouse over event occurs this anonymous function will be executed. Let's do the same thing for this as well. Even at this point the behavior of this program should be the same. 
notice that on mouse over and on mouse out. So this is the same example that we discussed just now. So here we are assigning an anonymous function to mouse over and mouse out events using the properties of the DOM object. Now, if an event ha handler is assigned using both, that is an HTML attribute and a DOM object property, the handler that is assigned using the DOM object property overrides the one that is assigned using the HTML attribute. Let's understand what we mean by this with an example. So here we have a button. Let's change the code here. Let's actually have two functions. Let's call this handler1 and let's say we want to display an alert message saying um, handler assigned using HTML attribute and let's say here handler assigned using DOM object property. Now so far we know that there are two ways to associate an event handler to an event of a given element. One is by using the attribute like this. So on click of this button I want to call handler1. So we are associating this handler that is handler1 to this button click event using the HTML attribute and within script here, within JavaScript, we can use uh, the document object property to associate this handler. Let's change the name to handler2. So within the script, I'm going to use document.getElementById and the ID of the button is ptn. And let's say on click, we want to associate handler2. Now, if you recollect from you know what we have discussed before, um, here the root object is the vendor object, and if you look at the code here, we are saying document dot get element by id. Can I do this? Can I say vendor dot document dot get element by id? Absolutely. So we are going from the root vendor dot document, and then we are using the dot get element by id function. So this should exactly work the same way as uh, document dot get element by id. So now notice that we have uh, you know one handler assigned using the attribute of the HTML element, and the second handler is assigned using the attribute of the DOM object. So now let's see which one is going to work. So when I click the button, notice that handler assigned using DOM object property executes. So when I click OK, I don't get any other alert message. That means basically, you know, the handler that we have assigned using the on uh, the DOM object property has overwritten the handler that is assigned using the HTML attribute. So if we were to comment this line, then this handler will be assigned to the click event. So now when we click this, handler assigned using HTML attribute message appears. So this is the same example that we just discussed. Now, using this approach that is assigning event handlers to events using DOM object property, we can assign only one event handler method to a given event. Uh, now if you look at the code that we have got here, notice that you know we are assigning two handlers okay click handler 1 and click handler 2 to the same event of the button control that is the click event now here handler 2 overrides handler 1 so whichever handler that we have assigned last that basically wins let's look at this in action so let's say here we are alerting this message handler 1 and here we are alerting handler 2 Let's get rid of this handler that we have assigned using the HTML attribute. And then let's assign handler1 first and then handler2 next. And let's run this piece of code. So now it should output handler2. 
notice that we get handler 2. Now if we re reverse the handler assignment, now the last handler that is assigned is handler 1. So this function should be called. Notice that we get handler 1. So basically the handler that is assigned last wins. Thank you for listening and have a great day.